All right, guys, so WrestleMania 39 night one was yesterday. I was live in attendance. I went with a few of my good friends and we had a blast. And for those of you wondering, yes, I recorded plenty of content that's going up on the channel in probably a few days. I am still on vacation, so I don't want to spend all day editing that. But I figured what I can do is talk about my experience watching WrestleMania 39 night one live. So before I head out for night two, here is my review of WrestleMania 39 Saturday. So the show started off pretty hot with John Cena versus Austin Theory for the United States Championship. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I missed 90% of this match and you guys are going to look at me and be like all angry, but this was the bathroom break match for me. I know. Listen, listen, listen. Let me explain. Let me explain. It was a long time we took getting to this arena. LA traffic was hell. Then we got there. We decided to take pictures in front of the sign. Then SoFi Stadium is massive it was a big stadium so we took a while trying to find our seats then by the time we got to our seats people were sitting in them they didn't know where they were sitting i had to talk to them so by the time i sat down and everything the show was started and mind you i had to pee this entire time so i said i'm not gonna piss myself for this john cena austin theory match so i might as well just go during the match i love john cena but he ain't about to put on a five-star classic or nothing so i'll be all right now, by the time I came back, John Cena done put the five knuffle shuffle up and did the da 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 hit hey, hey, that was it. Like, I came back at the very end of the match. So, like, I can't really review it because I myself barely saw it. But what I can tell you is that most of the people that were in the arena that I talked to said that this match was a dud. Like, they weren't saying the match was bad, but they were saying that, like, it, it wasn't good. Like, I don't, I didn't hear, like, a single good thing about the match. Like, don't get me wrong, I will never, ever, ever say anything bad about John Cena as a wrestler. Like, I, I think he's, like, one of the greatest of all time. And it was quite an experience being there live to see a John Cena WrestleMania entrance, because I've never been able to say that up until this point. Childhood memories. Like, I always won it. Now as an adult, I get to have it. It was, it was cool. But the streets were talking, and they said that this match wasn't hitting. Would I be shocked that this match was not that good? Not really. Because the last John Cena match I saw was pretty basic. Like, John Cena in the tag match didn't really do too much. He hit his greatest hits, and then he went home. So if that was this match, I'm not shocked. Again, can't rate it, but it is what it is, right? Next on the card, we had a fatal four-way tag team match between Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Street Profits versus the Viking War Raiders versus Chad Gable and Otis, the Alpha Academy. Now, if I did not have to pee as soon as I got there, this would have been the bathroom break match. No slouch to all four men, but there has to be one match in there, and this was the match I cared least about. However, I am glad that I stayed because this match was actually really enjoyable. Everybody in this match had a chance to shine. Chad Gable did that huge chaos theory onto Braun Strowman, which is just impressive as all hell. Braun Strowman did his little run around the ring thing, that which is always really cool. He got motherfucking tackled by Angelo Dawkins, which is one of the biggest pops of the entire like match. Ricochet was flying all over the place. That was impressive. Hanson did like a fucking moonsault or attempted. I don't know, but he did some crazy shit. And then Tez was out here doing this fucking thing. My man in here, he he did something, I'm sure. But like, you know what I mean? And Otis, he was just being Otis. Don't sleep on this match, bro. I, this was just really entertaining all around. Like, I'm going to straight up give this match a three and a half. Like, it, it's, it's good and it's entertaining. It's a fun time. Don't skip it. Like, don't seek it, but don't skip it either. Now, this right here was the match I was most looking forward to the entire weekend. It's Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Yes, more than Cody versus Roman, I wanted to see Seth and Logan Paul. Because as Logan Paul has proved in many matches before, he can go. And we all know Seth Rollins can fucking go. So you put two men who are great up against each other? Like, you gonna get a barn burner, and that's what we got here. It was a barn burner. Let me take it back. Okay, it wasn't like a five-star match. But it was athletic as all hell, man. Logan was doing lucha salts and moon salts and doing his little shimmy shimmy and all that shit. Seth Rollins, with his eccentric gear, he had a Mastro doing the, oh, 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 like, just, just the entrance, the way he performed. Like, Seth Rollins always has been Hemi Herner, but tonight he put the boots on, and he pooed at you. Moment of the entire night, for me, was the Prime Bottle. You guys know what I'm talking about if you watch the match. They had the Bloom Prime Bottle, like, mascot out there, and a lot of people were like, oh, that's Logan Paul, because Logan Paul has appeared in one of Jake Paul's matches before. I definitely just bots that. I meant to say we thought it was Jake Paul because Lo he's been in Logan Paul's matches before. You know what I meant. Lo and behold, he takes off the fucking cap and it's KSI of all people. I did not expect for a second that KSI was going to be at WrestleMania, but there he was. Not only was he at WrestleMania, but he 
took a fucking bump. Like he got like Seth Rollins pulled him onto the announce table. Logan Paul not paying attention did a frog splash onto KSI through the announce table. Now mind you, KSI had the like the mascot outfit on, so like he probably didn't really feel anything, mind you. But it was still dope to see him take a bump and him being bumped by Logan Paul. I mean, I'm just saying, if they want to set up KSI versus Logan Paul, WrestleMania 40, I'm going to be in the area, obviously, because I'm from Philadelphia. Please do it, please. But I digress. I thought this match was hidden. My expectations were extremely high, and it did not meet those expectations. But I thought the match itself was really damn good. So I'm going to give it four stars. If not to seek out the match, you got to seek out both entrances for Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Logan Paul's was not as great as Seth's, but they were both worth seeking out. I know Logan Paul's contract is up, but I really hope he sticks around because I think that he's really great at wrestling. And if he really wants to do this, like, you know, part time, four times a year, I'm down for it. You're not going to hear a peep out of me if Logan Paul sticks around. Give Logan Paul the U.S. championship, damn it. All right, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Next up, we have the six woman tag between Becky, Trish, and Lita versus Dakota, EO, and Bailey of Damage Control. This match was all right. It was all right. Listen, as someone who grew up watching Trish and Lita for like the little bit of time I got to see them, because by the time I started watching wrestling, both of them were basically retired, it was a treat to see both of their entrances and Becky Lynch together. Both of them are older. They're like in their late 40s, so they were gassed during some of this match, especially Lita. But they still pulled through and had a damn good match. EO, Dakota, Becky, Bailey, they all did their thing, but it was truly a showcase for Lita and Trish at WrestleMania, and that was really what this was all about. If there was anything about this match that I didn't like was that Bailey got pinned because god damn it, I say it as a joke, but Bailey is probably the biggest woman's jobber on the entire roster. I swear to god, all she does is lose and eat pins. I feel like that's all she knows nowadays is just to lose. Like it's almost impossible to take her character seriously as even the leader of this faction. Like honestly and truly on Raw, they should just kick Bailey out of the goddamn group. They could do better. I'm gonna give this match three and a it's nothing special. It, it, it's, it's there, but mainly for Becky and Lita and Trish. Next up here, we have Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. Now, I've been talking to a lot of people about what their favorite match out of WrestleMania 39 is coming out of the arena, and universally, people have been saying it's Rey versus Dominic. And I will also say that my favorite match, not the best, but my favorite match of the night was Rey versus Dominic. It was just entertaining as all hell. From both entrances, Dominic gonna get locked up, gonna let me out, gonna let me out. Dominic his jail bird it like it was just great you gotta watch dominic's entrance ray coming out with the eddie theme song with snoop dogg california love all that shit that was great too but then they got into the ring and it's not a five-star classic i ain't gonna hold you but just seeing ray get his comeuppance on dominic and dominic bullying his family like dominic has really grew into his heel role i was skeptical for months but he is he's really got it down packed he ain't like a top five heel for me but like he's nearing it at this role he's at right now Finn and Damien got involved. Bad Bunny got involved. I'm just saying, Bad Bunny versus Dominic is hitting. I want to see that now. My only true nitpick was that it was a Cinnamon Toast Crunch sponsor batch, and that was like all around the ring. It was a little distracting. But outside of that, a very enjoyable match. I'm going to give it four and a quarter out of five stars. Definitely going to watch it. Co main event of the night Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. This was great. Easily one of the best women's matches in WrestleMania history. They had a fantastic match at WrestleMania 36, and this was better than that. Rhea Ripley, great A seller. Made everything Charlotte did look impactful, and like she was fighting for her life, even though she's like top heel. Charlotte Flair made Rhea look good. They both did great things in here. Like, I have little to nothing bad to say about it. It's just not a perfect match. But literally, it is so near perfect that I'm going to give this match four and three quarters out of five stars. Rhea got her crowning moment, and Charlotte was smiling afterwards. Honestly, one of the best endings I've seen. As a heel, smiling at another heel winning, like, you can't beat that, bro. Top tier shit right here. On the topic of top tier shit, the main event, the Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Bro, amazing. We all knew the story going into this and what it was going to hit to. And they nailed everything from the storyline aspect. The drama of Jey Uso and Sami Zayn. Jimmy Uso being down packed, trying to keep Jey Uso in the game. Kevin Owens coming to the aid of Sami Zayn. The tag team moves, the tag team action, the cohesion, the dynamic. It's all fantastic, bro. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's a five-star match. First ever tag team championship main event in WrestleMania history and well-deserved. A must-watch, if for nothing else. And as a whole, I'm going to give WrestleMania 39 night one four and a half out of five stars. See you guys for night two, baby. Let's